So these past couple weeks, I wasn't really feeling as well as I normally did, and I kind of cut back on some of the things I was doing. And it made me realize, because you kind of teeter-totter a lot of the time with giving up, is that many of us, including myself, will accept God's good without accepting His adversity. So today what we're going to talk about, I think this is an important message for a lot of people that are out there that are, you know, you're going through something and, and <clears throat> when you're building anything or you're just going through life, you know, a lot of the time, you know, you get to a point where it's, it's a weird feeling where you just kind of want to stop doing it. You kind of want to just take a second, take a break or whatever it is. And what we have to remind ourselves is that the reason you want to do that is because you don't fully know if this is going to work or you sh you you think you don't and the thing is is faith is believing in something that you don't see yet and many of us when we're trying to go through life we're trying to do something or if you're trying to build anything you're trying to do it in a way to do and build something that you don't see but in your mind you know it's real and we have to understand and what God told me is that he never fails so giving up is kind of a stupid option and we have a society now that tends to think because they face adversity that that means to stop doing something and this is where I truly believe this is being a man in life is that you don't do that because everything is possible one of the the youtubers that I was watching the other day Casey Neistat which his famous story is basically just doing YouTube for almost a decade to finally get to where he was and you guys are my troops on the ground so make sure you hit that like and subscribe and share this content because it helps spread the word of God to as many people that need it now back to the video even even so he was doing it for so long a lot of us men in this day and age can't even do something for a year without quitting on it because we didn't see millions of dollars or whatever it is and this is why I'm believe God is telling me to have this message for you because many of us want to quit on things because of the adversity and that is the part that is going to make or break you essentially when you hit that point is where you either move forward or you stop that's the point that all of us hit and I would even say probably 90% of men they hit that point and they think that this is no longer something that they want to do the thing is is that a lot of us accept God's blessings, but we don't accept his adversity. A lot of us accept the good that God will give, but any sort of bad we then give up. And this is why a lot of us tend to give up our faith. If you look in the Bible, every man that was used by God or woman, it wasn't just the story goes, hey, she had a great life or he had a great, great life. It was always good, never had to face anything bad, and God just gave him everything. No, there's no story like that in the Bible of anyone that you'll read because there's a point to that because God wants to see your true faith. You know, even Jesus put his disciples through a storm in order to test how much faith that they had in him. So when you're doing something, a lot of the time the adversity is the test to see how bad that you want something. How bad do you really truly want to build this? How bad are you going to keep following God's word as he tells you? Because the point is, is that the idea came to you from God. God gave you the idea to do anything in your life or even to just continue down a path in your life. Or you even discern the voice of God as having told you the path that you need to go. But a lot of us see that path, and the thing is, is this is how the devil works, is God gives you the path, but the path is pretty hard, you know? The, the path is not going to be an easy path because it's the righteous path. It's the right path, it's so it will be harder. Satan's going to give you that easy path. Satan's going to give you that easy, oh yeah, you can just do this and make that, and you know, you don't have to work that hard. You can just, you know, sell your body. You can just sell your soul. You can just, you know, go to my side. You can stop believing in God and I'll give you all these things. The easy path, which most people take, instead of the righteous path that a lot of us don't because it's going to take longer, it's going to be harder, and we're going to have to put in a lot more hours than the other path. That's where the society has come to this kind of 
stopping point where many of us come to that point and we choose the devil's path. We choose the easy path. You know, I, I can even say, especially many women, instead of becoming a righteous woman that is good, they end up getting plastic surgery and going down the easy path of selling their body to get fame and money and all that stuff. But the thing is, is when you go through the harder path, that's where you receive true joy because you know you followed God's path. So the verse we're going to go into, it's going to be one of the oldest books, if not the oldest book in the Bible, it's going to be the book of Job. And if anybody knows what happened to Job, well, Job was a faithful servant and Satan wanted to test him to see his actual faith in God. And God allowed it because God allows free will, which I think is a remnant of what happens to a lot of us in our life is that Satan has free will. You know, the, the thing is, is that you have to understand that Satan is around like a roaring lion trying to find his prey. And if you're weak, he'll attack you and he's going to do things to you to make you go away from God because that's the adversity. That's just what you have to deal with. And what ended up happening with Job is that the devil tempted him because he did stuff to him that was would have had most people falling away. But we're going to go to the end of the book of Job to see what actually happens. So it's going to be chapter 42, and we're going to go to verse 10. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers, all his sisters, and all those who had been with him, acquaintance before, came to him, ate food with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and a ring of gold. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 1,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons, three daughters, and he called the names first Jeremiah, the second Keziah, and the name of the third Karen Hapuch. And in all the land they were found, no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and grandchildren four generations. So Job died old and full of days. The most important part I think we can take from that part of the Bible is that he blessed Job even more after the adversity. And I think you have to put that in your brain is that when you're going through the adversity, most people are going to give up. That's why God gives you the same thing that you had before. You know what I'm saying? It, it's the same life that you had before. He's not going to give you anything more because you didn't face the adversity like you were supposed to, and especially as a man especially as men in the society, that is the point that makes you a man. That's the point that turns you from being a boy to a man. And many men don't want to face that adversity, not even for huge things, but for like, you don't want to talk to a girl because you're scared. You know, that's like a small adversity that many men will not try and overcome. You know, and it, it's made men more and more pathetic because what they've done is they've done this acceptance society that allows you to just be pathetic and not ever face any sort of problems in your life. And that becomes the biggest problem because then you never face any problems, so you never get to grow. So you end up having a huge problem in your life that you don't even realize is a problem. I'll even revert, revert to boxing. Like, for instance, I, I was sparring the other day, and basically I, I spar people that are twice my size usually because I like having that challenge and one of the times you know a lot of the time I'm pretty elusive so I can get away from punches but essentially what happened was the bigger guy he got me in a corner and he just started wailing on me and he got me a lot of times and the thing was is that I could continue doing the same thing and getting frustrated at it or not approaching it again but what ended up happening is just like in life, you have a problem, you have to figure out a solution. So what ended up happening is I, you know, was discussing with my coach and he taught me a couple things and ended up instead of staying in one point, because of course, if I'm trying to square up, I, I'm pretty hard puncher, but you know, I'm just going to take shots because they're bigger than me. They're longer than me. They have every sort of advantage that I don't have. I have to use my skills to my advantage. I have to learn. I have to move forward. So what ended up happening is I ended up basically hopping around like a bunny a lot so that they could never get me into a corner. And that's when I started having a lot more shots. I, they started not being able to hit me again. And it was just something that I learned where, that's why I say fighting is important because you learn by taking punches to the face. And that's, you know, life metaphorically you do. But in fighting, you physically take punches to the face. So that's what life is gonna be. 
you're going to take punches to the face. You're going to get hit. And this is why the best fighters are continually the ones that don't come up with a great game plan and they just execute the game plan. They are, but a lot of them are the ones that are able to make adjustments later on into the fight so that they can figure out how to win the battle. They can make the adjustments and correct themselves. You know, where some fighters, they just go in and they just have the game plan. And when the game plan doesn't work, then they don't know what to do. It's the same thing for life. It's the same thing for when you're approaching anything. You have to be able to adjust, be able to move forward in a different pathway, not give up and try something else, but keep going towards what you're going for. But just do it differently. Learn from it. You know, adjust a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Just make the small adjustments so that it can continue to move forward. And the thing is, is that path is going to be hard. That path is going to be significantly harder than just taking the easy path of getting drunk on the weekends, hooking up, doing all those things. The path of God is going to be way more difficult. But what I can tell you right now is that God never fails. So that's what you can have in your back pocket, is that God never fails. And whatever path you're taking right now, it's the right path. And it's the path that God wants for you to. Well, I mean, depending on what you're doing. I don't know what the path is, you know what I'm saying? But if you're trying to glorify God in a way of doing something, it's the right path. But it's going to be the harder path. But this is where we make men. This is the whole point is that this is where masculinity is made. And this is what they're trying to take away from us men in society. They're trying to make us, you know, uh, begging on our knees, women pleasers that can't say anything wrong, that can't say anything that will make people mad. You know, there's actually a a goodness to being disliked. And I think a lot of men don't want to be disliked in this society. They don't want to be not liked by people and there's a power in being disliked because then more people will like you for not being like everybody else and they're trying to take away masculinity and this is the point right here this is the point where you form your masculinity this is the exact situation that will then form you into a man is adversity and they're trying to take that away from us men and just make us these vr headset jerking off zombies that never actually find their true masculinity and that's why so many of them are depressed because they're not actually finding the masculinity in them the masculinity of facing adversity the masculinity of hard work the masculinity of following god they're not allowing us to find that they're just letting us sit there watch tv jerk off eat as much garbage food that we can and never sit there and have to take the hard road the one that sucks the one that for probably 70 percent of it is going to be horrible just like job 70 percent of it was horrible but in the end God will then triple, quadruple, bless you way more than he did before just because you decided to go through the adversity and still glorify God. So if you want to be that dude that sits there and every time he feels a little bit of heat, he just has to get out the kitchen because he doesn't want to face that to his face. That was made no sense. But if you want to be that type of dude, turn this video off. But if you want to be that dude that understands that life is going to get hot a little bit and the men in the world face that heat and move past it in an easy way, knowing that God is just there with you. God will pull you through it. Just rely on him, lean on him, and he will guide you through. And when you face that adversity with God, well, in the end, he's going to bless you way more than he did before. And you want to be that dude that goes through hardships so that he can become his true self. We'll keep watching. Smells like hard work and determination, boys. Hit that like and subscribe if you like this video and share it with your friends. We need to spread the word of God to as many people in this day and age as possible. Comment down below. Let me know what you're going through. If you are going through something, I'd love to hear it. And love to hear how you're you're applying some of these Bible verses in yourself. So comment down below. Let me know what's going on with your life, what's happening, what the problems are. I'd love to hear it. Um, As always, guys, praise God, love God. He's great all the time. Jesus Christ is our Lord. He will bring you through the hardships. But you have to face adversity in order to feel some of the good. You can't just always get good. You can't just always get good. Jesus Christ loves you. Peace.